Hi everyone, it's Carl from the Information Lab here, and I wanted to talk to you today about the third part of our Show Me How session, looking at the functions of Show Me, the visualizations it creates. So therefore, we move on to highlight tables. Highlight tables are really useful because Tableau is trying to help us visualize our data better, and actually, that's a great way to look at highlight tables. That it's adding a visual element to something that would previously not have one. So let's look at container by shipping cost, for example. If I said spot the third biggest number, actually, you kind of take a little bit of a view to do that. It's not too difficult when you've only got these seven metrics. But what if you had more? What if we add in order date to this? And we're looking across year or year and quarter. Now, if I ask you to spot the largest number, you would struggle to do that without having to think about it quite hard. Cognitively, your brain's having to work a lot to find out what the answer is. If we looked at this as a highlight table instead, though, we can kind of give ourselves visual clues as to where the answer might be. Instantly, my eye is drawn to the right-hand part of the page, and I can kind of see some dark areas here, 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 and here. So is it a bar chart? No. And would that be more effective? Yes, for spotting the third. But if we wanted this table of data styled view, then actually we can kind of see that we've got 3,000 as the largest, followed by 2,900, so it's going to be 2,906 would be our third largest value. That's pretty cool that you can actually do that. But what is Tableau doing and what is Show Me doing to create the values and to create the table in that way? Well, let's see what Show Me does automatically. Like anything, if I select the data that I want to use, Show me will tell me whether it's a, a recommendation to show the data in that way. I've got no mapping item, so it's not going to let me look at maps. So let's click the highlight table. Show me's done the work for me that I did previously. It's brought in container onto rows, and then it's also letting me see a color element to shipping cost and also labeling, so it's nice and clear for me. And that's exactly what I produced manually last time, but this time show me is doing it for me. And a highlight table can be really useful when you look at financial metrics. So you want the numbers, you often hear finance departments ask to see the numbers themselves and actually don't just want to see a visualization. So these kind of tables work really well. If we didn't want to look at shipping cost and we wanted to look at profit, for example, then actually show me automatically drops into our, our red green diverging, which is really useful. But if we're looking at financial data, a hint by Tim in the Information Lab team was to actually look at it in the terms that make sense for finance. Is something in the black? Is something in the red? So let's actually put that in. Let's add a white diverging element so we're only looking and we're kind of giving those visual hints to our eyes that we're seeing the things really pop out that matter to us. Is something really profitable? Or is a time period really profitable? Or is it a, a heavy loss leader for us? So quarter three, 2012, for example, jumps out straight away, as does quarter one, 2011. My eyes are drawn to that because it's got the intensity of the red. Same if I'm looking for the profitable answers. I'm seeing Q4 2013, and my eyes can very quickly jump to Q4 2011. So I can get a real good feel and understanding for what's actually a quite complex set of data on a table, but I can absorb it really quickly. Highlight tables work really well when paired with other data types as well, or other visualization types. So let's duplicate this sheet. And actually, let's look at this through a bar chart instead. Let's again color everything we've got by profit. We'll see our, our red and our black is carried over. Let's create a dashboard that compares the two. So let's add our chart and our table to go with it. Let's just Take our legend and drop it at the bottom of the page. And let's make sure we can just bump up the size of the dashboard in width a little bit so it fits to my screen nicely. Now, what we can do is we can actually fit our chart to the entire view of the dashboard. And what we can also do is obviously use dashboard actions to highlight going between the two. So as soon as I click on something, it's going to highlight where the position is elsewhere. So I can see the highest point. And I can see how that sits in terms of the visual, or I can go the other way. I can understandably select whichever I want to in the table, but I can actually select the area I'm interested in on the chart, or the areas. So for example, small box, how does that appear? 
if I wanted to make it even clearer and still use that highlight table, I could actually use the action to filter. So filtering from that top graph to the data sheet underneath. So now when we click small box, we only see small box, but we're still seeing that color scale run through what we're actually looking for. So my eyes are still visually drawn to what I actually need to see. If we're looking for the most unprofitable, I see the most red on jumbo box, we can dig into those numbers further. It just takes us away from just being dependent on, on just plainly the numbers and nothing else. So that's highlight tables. That's how to build them either automatically using show me or manually and a context in which you can use them. Hopefully you found that useful. Thanks everyone.